Hey ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the Premier League, sponsored by Trish TV, hosted by Ainge, and brought to you guys by DigitalCommentators.com. I am Luminous from DC, and joining me alongside is Purge Gamer from Ghost of Gamers. And today we're casting a best of two series, MYM versus CLG, and the picks and bans are well underway. Yep, and it looks like it's going to be a very interesting game. First round bans, we're going to see a Broodmother as well as a Nature's Prophet, and finally an Invoker and an Anti-Mage. So the first pick there was actually a Chen, which I'm excited to see, because uh, every game that I've watched in the last week, Chen has been first banned. Or at least in the first round ban, Chen was thrown in there. Broodmother usually got squeaked by, so I'm excited to see how well that impacts the game. Yep, Dark Seer is the uh, stable pick now for CLG. Skipping over a Venomancer, which has been Lotus fan favorite for a long, long time. I'm thinking for the Dark Seer. Trust me on that, she will still pick up the Venomancer if he can. But Darkseer right now, a very broken hero. Uh, not even, we've been talking about the Acceptor while Black Book Cloud. Even without the Acceptor, it's just a team fight machine. And it seems like Hi Hi is picking up some team fight hero to try to counteract against the Tie Hunter. I, I guess it's a good pick for themselves, but it's more so if, if you give it to the enemy hero. If you give them Vacuum Ravage or Vacuum like Chain Frost, it is just really ugly. So I think it's more of a picking it just for yourself, and let's see how that goes. Yeah, I would agree with your sentiments on Darks here. I mean, I, the Aegidum Scepter does make it a lot better, because you can spawn illusions. It's good for pushing then, but even in the early game, Vacuum is just the nasty component with Wall of Replica. Like, grouping people up turns a regular AoE into a monster, so even something like Rasta Aethershock hits every single hero on the enemy team, and stuff like that really makes your heroes go much, much farther in a team fight. So Wall of Replica plus the Vacuum is just an obscenely nasty combo. And once he gets that Aegidim Scepter, it just gets a little bit worse. So Darkseer going to be a staple of team picking until he ends up getting a little nerfed, I'm assuming. Yep, but the next two picks are going to be a Mirana from the Radiant team, and CLG is going to grab the Venomancer, so their hero's looking pretty strong. Unfortunately for the Darkseer, or I guess fortunately for the Darkseer, but unfortunately for the rest of us, there was a there's a buff waiting for Darkseer to actually even kick in. So uh, this is the, of course, a 6.73C uh, buff that hasn't even applied to the tournament version yet. So what was it? I don't remember. What it's it like was. Iron Shell getting more damage. Oh, it's been. It's like it lasts longer. Something like that. More, but it, it's, it's just more buff. mana efficient or something. It, it like just that, buffed yeah. to Dark Seer, and this hero does not need any more buff. Marana, by the way, has been picked like six, seven games in a row in Premier League matches, so we're going to see that hero once again. And I, I think most teams are kind of deeming her as the quote-unquote, not even a Darkseer counter, but a hero that works decently against Darkseer because of the mobility. You could get away from all those illusions that's chasing you. And of course, she's a pretty decent late-game semi-DPS if you give her enough farm. And the farm is like, you know, Wave Bands, Treads, Manta into another Tier 4 item, probably MKB. But it's, it's a long time from now, but she definitely could the shot of damage if she needs to do so. Yeah, and another really good counter against Darkseer is just disabling him for a very long time, so if you can land an arrow long range, that can make a big difference. That's kind of the case for any hero that's really, really fast, similar to like Night Stalker or Darkseer. If they're stunned and not moving, everybody's attacking them, and it's actually a lot easier to kill them, so um, second round bans looks like we have an Earthshaker going down for MYM, and then a Beastmaster out of CLG, and finally a Night Stalker from MYM. You can see that Loda's banning heroes to protect him Protect the Darkseer from being out of position, both Beastmaster for the long range stun like you were talking about. And of course Stormster, the fact that he could just bypass anything and grab the Darkseer and set up uh, initiation would be really, really key to shut down the Darkseer. So right now the bands are really geared towards protecting that Darkseer, but because of that they don't really have too much stun to work with. 3.75 seconds on a Shackle Shot, that's all they got so far. So I'm looking towards them to pick up something else. Surprisingly Shadow Shaman is really being neglected by either team. I think Radiant could really benefit from a Chen Shadow Shaman lineup. Go for some early game pushes, get some towers. <coughs> Excuse me, get that priestess farm. Go ahead, Purge, I'm yeah. dying right now. <laughs> it's okay. I would absolutely agree with that. It's a little weird that Shadow Shaman has not been picked up quite yet. Uh, Faceless Void is thrown into the fourth spot here. Uh, that's going to give him a lot of teamfight AoE, being able to drop down that Chronosphere and disable for long periods of time. Uh, but haven't actually seen a Faces Void in a decent amount, not a, not a huge amount, I'm not surprised by this pick, but it's going to be interesting to see how his hard carry works up. Chronosphere is actually going to be very nice against Darkseer once again, um, you know, not going to be able to cast a lot of spells, and um, the Illusions won't be able to run around and mess things up. Dragonite will be picked up by CLG, which is going to allow them to do even more pushing, so I'm expecting them to get a final pushing hero if possible. The Brady team doesn't have a ton of counter push, which is the main thing I'm concerned about for them right now. Once again, they do have a Chen, which is going to allow them to push, but they don't really have a ton of AoE, mostly just looking at, I guess, Chen Creeps and Priest the Moon 
uh, Starf Storm or whatever it's called now. Something like that is probably all they have. Um, might need to pick up some kind of counter pusher. Um, but even then, I guess there's not really a whole lot of creep wave coming. Um, it's mostly just Venomancer Ward plus Dragon Knight ulti um, doing lots of tower damage. So we'll see what they go for here, but it's MYM's turn to pick next. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that they pick into a void and then how how Lotus and Afraid to pick up that DK. There's a Crystal Maiden, gives them a secondary... Ooh, actually. Who the hell is gonna... There's three supports right now. So we might see something like a solo mid CM. Solo TIE Hunter. Um, my, I'm gonna guess Tide supporting... Why not a try lane? Oh well. Somebody's got... Well, Solo mid Tide, I'm calling it right here. You think so? I, I don't know. I'm getting trolled. I don't know what the hell this is. But Tide with level is actually not, not bad at all. He's a decent... Yeah. I mean, you know, we... Sometimes you play pubs and you're just like, Oh, I wanna carry Tide. So, he's a decent hero if you give him enough farm, but I, I, it's so hard to call this. Crystal Maiden can be decent with a lot of farm as well, but yeah, Crystal Maiden as the last pick, it's going to give them the AoE that you were talking about that they're lacking uh, in terms of counter pushing ability. Nova is a decent spell in terms of weakening the creep wave. Starstorm can be uh, the finisher in that case, uh, but still, this is we very weak counter pushing power. If the CLG decides to go push with a sh Shaman or something like that, then... I do believe MYM is still in trouble, but I don't think that's what CLG have in mind. It seems like they're going to go for somewhat of a late game carry. Um, I, I still have not found out that whether Illusions on Dragonite, the range form, will splash. But I'm pretty sure they do. So if you can make a wall replica with your own DK Illusions and splash out damage, even though it's not the biggest damage that you're dishing out, it's still extra damage. And it's crazy stuff. Uh, the Iron Shell plus the... Dragonite is going to do quite a bit of damage, and now you're going to add Black Hole on top of that. So Vacuum into Black Hole is what we're looking for, and CLG is going for some wobble combo here. Yeah, it looks like it. Looks. Like, I think our stream is messed up, by the way. Um, the uh, every All the overlays are there. I don't know if you accidentally deleted the Dota 2 um, plugin, like the the screen. Oh, let me, let me check. There's an issue yes, with it. Yes, 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 yes. Thanks for right, so, letting no me problem. know. Um, Enigma is going to be the last pick for CLG, like you said, the old wombo combo. Lots of AoE, and they can do a lot of cool things in their team fight. mainly. I mean, they can even do like a vacuum black hole or something to catch any stragglers, throw that into a wall of replica, and if people get vacuumed onto a, a, um, a wall of replica plus a black hole, those illusions are going to be wailing for like multiple seconds, and they're actually the highest dealing illusions in the game pretty much. I think they do up to 90%, which is ridiculous and unheard of. Most illusions sit around 30 to 40% of damage. Um, and it looks like we're in the game here. Do you know how to enable the game menu? I haven't enabled before, but now it's like before you could capture a game or a media player, you first need to click inside the window you wish to capture. I'm like, I'm um, clicking, I'm clicking. I'm not sure what you mean. Um, is it your exploit? Yeah, it's my exploit. You know the add game feature? Can't you just add screen region? Yeah, I will have to put Dota 2 on borderless window though. Which I would do right now. Yeah, you should have it like that anyways. That's probably why it's not working. Oh no, with a new exploit license you could put it in full screen. Oh, okay. And then you could do some magic and make it work. Oh, I see, I was not familiar with that. Yeah. Sorry for all the technical difficulties. I have it on full screen to save my computer a little bit of, you know, processing, processing power because my computer, not exactly a beast. Let's look at who's playing what. I do believe MYM is playing with a whole bunch of stannins. Uh, MYM Tia on the Crystal Maiden here. Uh, Duo Duo Lan Nan something something some ch some Chinese name is playing the Tai Hunter. Freedom is going to be playing the Chen. HYHY playing the Priestess, and we have Razor C playing Marana. Uh, excuse me, Razor C playing the Void. Alright, and for the Dire team, uh, CLG, we have uh, Aki on the Venomancer. Um, looks like Loda is going to be playing the Dragonite, and in the mid lane, we have uh, PyCat is on the Windrunner. Miracle is going to be playing Enigma, and the uh, last hero is going to be Nika, I think. Yeah, he's going to be playing Darkseer on the bot lane, going booth first, kind of interesting. Yep. Generally, you don't need to go boots first, considering that you do have search. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And he hasn't skilled his first point yet, which is a good sign. You don't you really need to skill your first point until you you know make sure what you need. And sometimes you need surge, sometimes you need iron shell. Yeah, sometimes a lot of times you're better off with getting stout shields, regen, and stats. So I have no idea what that boots first is about. Hmm. I really like MYM's lanes though. It looks like they're gonna be doing an aggressive uh, tied crystal maiden lane with aggressive um, Chen jungling, and this is gonna be good for them because. Dragonite is actually a hero who's not obscenely strong at laning. If you can shut down his farm for the first 10 minutes, he actually doesn't contribute a whole lot to the game. So I think uh, I really like this, that they're going to be aggressive here and possibly take a fast tower, if possible. Yeah, we'll see. Tidehunter is going to be getting the farm, or maybe Crystal Maiden and Tide's going to be splitting it. Generally, you don't see something like this, but the benefit of this is both of them is going to have you know extra bracers or whatnot, uh, have faster boots and courier upgrades. And that's going to really, uh, in a team fight, they're going to die a lot less, or it's going to take longer to kill them. In any case, they're going to be more effective uh, in a game. But unfortunately, they don't really have the... Well, uh, it really comes down to whether Void could handle his lane fine by himself against the Darkseer, which he might have trouble because he is a melee hero against Iron Shell. It's going to hurt quite a bit before he gets up to that ring of health. Yeah, that's definitely possible. So, um, the Anchor Smash is going down Crystal Mane, doing his best. Her best to harass actually picked up Frostbite level up and now has her AoE. So now they have to really worry about getting these last hits here. So that's going to definitely be an issue. Um, Mirana is still on the mid lane. Two levels of Starstorm now with the leap. Pretty equal lane there against a uh, Windrider and Pycat. Obviously very talented players. So it's going to really come down to how often they can nuke each other. Um, if if either one makes a mistake and takes a nuke, that can be an advantage. And there's, for example, there's a, a power shot coming from Pycat. It's going to get last hits as well as doing damage. And he does now have his bottle. And so he's going to be spamming a lot of that stuff. Yeah, when it comes to new comparison, the uh, power shot is just simply a lot better when it comes to harassing and farming as well. Star Storm mm -hmm. requires you to be in a little bit closer to the enemy, which requires you to take some physical hits and whatnot. And also, because Windrunner is an intelligence hero, and also the uh, power shot is just uh, cheaper when it comes down to mana. So I do believe that Windrunner is going to have the advantage. It does have better laning um, animation as well. And you see Windrunner pushing the wave, getting the bottle, and securing herself a haste on the bottom. So she's having a well... A good way in terms of controlling this lane so far. Yeah, I think the weirdest lane that we have in this game so far is the Faces Void solo against the Darkseer on the bot lane. It's kind of an interesting lane though. If you think about it, Darkseer unlikely to score a kill because he does have time walk. If I mean, Darkseer is a hero that needs to be up and close and walking next to the hero to score the kill. So as long as he can get the time walk and get it within tower range and hopefully keep himself survivable, it should be okay. But the downside is that when these Iron Shells come out, he can just auto attack the uh, Faces Void and get some extra damage in there with that Iron Shell. Yeah, it seems like C is not really worried about his survivability either. Has opting for Bash instead of Backtrack as his uh, level 4 spell. Might be getting it level 5 as well. This is a good uh, transition if you know that you're going to be just free farming against the enemy lineup. Having the extra Bash allows you to get off a couple of Harass and uh, the Bash helps out in last hitting and what else as well. But I'm, I'm worried about him. If he runs out of salves before he gets to his uh, Ring of Health, then he's going to be in big trouble. He's basically have to stand back. And, and wait for the creep to go under his tower, even so, the Dark Shield is going to harass him very much so. Yeah, I think he's going to be okay though, he does have a cell, he's at 638 gold, and there's the first blood on the top lane, looks like Dragonite goes down, and just like I said, man, he's not going to have a good lane experience, they do use a Wildkin Tornado, and a couple slows there, and that is just really rough in the early game, that Wildkin Tornado is a disgustingly good disable when nobody has boots. Yeah, Dire Heroes caught a little bit out of position. Venomancer was doing the pull, but even so, we we still saw Loda going up there to try to get a last hit or two. And of course, MYM took advantage of that massive slows in terms of Nova, Gush, Tornado, and whatever else. They just went on him, and uh, Loda just uh, gave up the first play. Moving on the mid lane here, a little bit of fight over the rune here. Double damage, rune gets spotted by the Mirana. So she apparently had the advantage in terms of grabbing rune because of Leap, allowing to get her, gets her to the place very, very quickly. But PyCat still... Farming away, popping the haste rune, and uh, trading a lot of harass, and it's going to be getting a last hits on that siege unit. Let me check out farm so far. Marana's got 10 and 7, and Windrunner's got 21 and 8, and you can see doubling SES is what we're talking about, how the Windrunner a lot better in terms of being in lane. Yeah, I really like Tidehunter's uh, skill build so far, getting a little bit of everything here, probably going to max out Gush first, and he's got an Arcane Boots already, which is actually super yes. scary. This is kind of similar to when an Earthshaker gets a really fast Arcane, he can spam his Fissure just to get last hits and harass, and I expect that is going to have a tough time, because he's constantly going to have to worry about being slowed and killed with follow-up from Crystal Maiden and possibly Chen, so... Um, definitely a very dangerous try lane here. Where's Dragonite at? Um, Dragonite's a bot. He did switch lanes, yep. so he's going to take the farm on the bot lane. Looks like Darkseer switching the top. Going to be a little bit more survivable there. Yep, so uh, kind of a uh, 
crisis management from CLG here. You're realizing yeah. the top lane is not going to work out and they're going to switch lane. And the question is whether the M uh, MYM team is going to decide to push off this. They can push, uh, well, maybe not with Darkseer in the lane, but they could definitely go for a kill and maybe transition into push. Frostbite is going to be really, really a key against the Darkseer. So let's see if uh, she is going to be skilling out one. No, it's going to be skilling Nova instead, getting some AoE. Not a bad choice either. But uh, yeah, uh, I wonder what whether MYM is going to keep on farming with this. They do have the advantage, but maybe they want to really take advantage of the fact that they have better heroes so far in this stage of the game. Yeah, I, th I think they definitely... I don't know, I'm not really sure how it's going to go, but I think they're pretty happy with the, the way their lane setup is going. The only lane that they're arguably losing is probably the mid lane. And of course, there is a jungling Enigma, so that's something else that they're going to have to worry about here. Uh, but Miracle now level 4, and he does have his Soaring 200 gold on top of that. And he's going to be fine as he's in the jungle. I'm kind of surprised actually that MYM hasn't gone roaming for him quite yet. And yeah, maybe he's still worrying about that lane dominance. Uh, Chen, by the way, now have gone to defensive jungle. Maybe a little bit worried about gank going his way. So he's going to be... Actually, I wonder if he's going to try to set up a gank on the DK. Uh, we do have level 6 on Faceless Boy, so if Loda could be harassed down a little bit, um, they can go for a kill, but between Dragon Blood, it's, it's going to be so difficult for him to do so. But it looks like Chen is coming in. That is a Centaur, so should have enough sense to really bring him down if we could land him perfectly, but it's going to be tough. Yeah. I think C's doing a really good job here, not trying to give away the fact that he wants to be aggressive and just waiting for the right moment here. Uh, there's the flame breath, and now Loda completely out of mana. This is going to be a big deal. No stun coming his way. Are they going to let the Centaur hit first? Or are they going to ult it? Gets a lucky bash off, and there's the Centaur stun. And there's the Chronosphere. Perfect Chronosphere from C here. Even the Centaur is still slapping him in the wow. last hit. Killing the Dragonite. That was a good play. Perfect Chronosphere just described that one. Oh my goodness. That was pretty high skill stuff. And on the top lane here, they had an invisible Windrunner in trying to set up a gang. Unfortunately, did not get it out. Now, Marana going for a kill. His power shot's going to hit HY. by Shackle up. Wow, what a hack Shackle on PyCat. Gladly taking that kill. And uh, I think she's got to go back now. Or maybe he's going to just stay in lane and sap a little bit of XP and wait for the 8 rune. Yeah, but I think that's definitely a good plan. Yeah, her HP very low, but there's not really a ton of here that could possibly gank her at this moment, unless she gets arrowed or something with the Priest of Moon response. So I think she's going to be absolutely fine hanging out there. Uh, Chen back in the jungle, he's now level 5. Actually opts to grab a third level of Test of Faith. Yeah. Not going for the Max Holy Persuasion. He does have a lot more nuke potential here. The downside is he's not going to get three creeps quite as fast, so it's gonna. I think it's going to make him a little bit more gank able. I would argue it's going to make his ganks a little bit more surefire. At times, you know, it's hard to chain... User disables, get centaurs behind people, things like that can be tough. So, interesting to see how well this affects the game. And Miwon toddling here, Tyhunter in a little bit of trouble. When is Kraken Shell going to take in? He just taken in right there, and that's going to save him's life. And that's why Kraken Shell, so, so good. Even with just a single point now, it looks like they're going to get a black hole on HY. HY, Gush goes on Miracle. There's a bite on him as well. Mirana's going to feed, though. Power shot going to make sure they get the kill and the question is whether anyone else is going to die. Crystal Maiden very very slow. Can we get a Shackle Shot cooldown? Pycat is chasing in. He's whoa gotta be careful. There's a Frostbite Tower doing some damage but not enough right now. Tie Hunter very low and need to back the hell out as well. Pycat helping his team getting a double kill. Power Shot missing there. So pretty good job. Good recovery on the top lane. Yeah, definitely. And there's a gush now, and Dragonite still looking to be aggressive. Are we going to have the damage? Yeah, Windrunner going to get a shackle. A couple hits here, that's going to be a 2.25, and the power shot scores the kill, man. Nice job by Pycat, weaving in and out for the kills, and I can't believe Tide isn't 6 yet. Yeah. Just now getting it, wow. Did he, yeah, did he just not have Ravage? Uh, he, I think he leveled up as he died, uh, like a creep died or something, because he was 5 that whole chase. <laughs> that was very unfortunate. Ravage could have changed everything. Meanwhile, HY, HY on the top lane trying to set something up. Arrow is ready to go, but um, oh, Arrow's going to miss still. And now Marana in a little bit of trouble out of mana at this point, and of course, Leap on cooldown. Going to back off. So it seems like uh, PyCat is really helping their team win the mid lane and thus uh, take advantage of the game as well. Meanwhile, we see Venomancer and Darkseer are coming on the bot lane. Do we have Chronosphere? We do have Ravage right now. Maybe they can go use a Ravage right now. Trying to get some block going on. Oh, that Tess of Fate being so big. And that's why leveling it up, in this case, working out so far. Void jumps in, and I think Aki's going to go down as well. Chronosphere being used just to make sure he gets a kill. A double kill goes to the Void, and he's mega farm at this point. Ring of Health, boots of speed, and another... 13, 37 gold on him. 
Yeah, that's really, really good. Probably pick up some treads here just to increase his attack speed, which is going to really up his damage potential, especially when his time lock is maxed like this. Getting more attack speed makes a big deal. So definitely, uh, see, or I'm sorry, MYM looking really happy right now, most likely. Their gold advantage is actually not in their favor. The Dire team has more gold farm, but that's probably because Enigma has been in the jungle pretty much uncontested, non-stop farming this entire early game. But I would still say this is definitely an advantage for MYM, despite no towers being down and despite them only having a two-kill lead here. Yep. Highcat looking for a kill against HYHY. HYHY is -HY just having a tough time. He does have his Invis written in his bottle bar right now, but if you want to check item comparison between the two mid hero, Face Boot and Headdress already up on Pycat along with the bottle as well. And Pycat's not just farming all day, he's been really helping his team to get ganks. And uh, I, I wonder how this the Marauder is going to recover, but so far, 10 minutes in the game, I feel like MYM's in a pretty decent position. The hero are very geared towards this stage of the game, but yet they don't. They are not going to lose a late game situation because you do have a Void and a Marana. Yeah, they're going to be sitting pretty good there. I mean, Dragonite obviously is going to want to do pushing and stuff, but unfortunately for them, their pushing lanes is pretty much a Venomancer and an Enigma, but their their top lane just really failed early on. Uh, Dragonite does have a Treads now, but you know that's all they're working with here, and uh, he's going to have his ulti whenever he wants to push the lane. But Crystal Maiden, of course, with the Max Crystal Nova is going to prove a threat, and Tidehunter with that Ravage in case they actually die, which is something that uh, most heroes don't generally have, and there's a smoke popped by the Crystal Maiden and the Tidehunter are going to be looking for a gank, possibly on the mid lane. Yes, it's going to be somewhat difficult, but they do have the Ravage, they have a single level of Fry Spike, and uh, let's see, they're going to run into a Enigma though, I think Enigma is going to be the Sacrificial Lamb, well, we will see, so far smoke is still up, and I do believe Dire somehow know, yeah they know, they were pinging right on top of that Tide, so he does know something is up right here, Arrow's going to miss, and I think they're going to make a go on PyCat regardless. There's a Gush. Frostbite, can we get it off? That's a question. There's a Frostbite. Arrow's going to hit. They're going to wait for the Ravage for TV. There's a Ravage. Can they get, get hit on the PyCat though? I don't think they can. Really low. Couple more hits yet. They are finally going to get killed. They're going to lose a tie though. Crystal Maiden coming for a second round spell. Hand of God comes in to delay that a little bit. Low to half HP. Nova puts him low. And there's a Black Hole on the Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden is going to go down. Who's going to pick up the last of Dragon Knight does? Nicely done. Pycat buys back from this, and I think they're going to transition to mid push. Huh, interesting. Uh, I think they're going to be pretty successful considering that Tide and Crystal Lane are down. Um, Tide unfortunately got picked off there, was not able to get. Uh, who was that second hero that didn't die? Uh, was that Dragonite? I can't remember. Yeah, Dragonite did not die. We're on the top lane here. HY is right in a little bit of trouble. I think she put a surge on the Pycat for helping Chase, but Nico not doing just that. There's a DD rune on the Windrunner as well, so. You know, I think they're going to go top and try to get a, another tower push down. Mid tower was destroyed very, very quickly. Marana in a little bit of trouble, using a lot of her mana trying to de defend this for now. And here comes the Venomancer and the Dragonite. And Dragonite does have his ulti in there. He's going to pop it. It's going to push the wave here, doing 20 damage per second to the tower. It's going to be most likely going to go down there. Their entire team's actually here for this. Um, yep. Enigma looks like he's going for a mechanism. Actually, Windrunner also has a headdress. Not really sure if that was a miscommunication or if one of them's going to get the pipe. The arrow does land on his Pycat, though. They're probably not going to go in. There's the Malefice on Mirana, but she's going to be absolutely fine. She does have a leap in case she really needs to get on. The Power Shot will miss as well. And finally, the first tower, actually, this is the second tower of the game, is dropped now. So nice uh, gold lead going to CLG from those two towers. You know, Voya on the bot lane trying to do whatever damage to the bot tower he can. Uh, brought it down to about a, a third, and then, uh, you know, got to back off for now. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be Mecha Pipe uh, this distributed evenly between the uh, Mara uh, excuse me, the Windrunner and Enigma. I think Pipe is not absolutely necessary in this case, but you know, blocking the Ravage and Nova and Starstorm, mm -hmm. not a bad choice. And uh, Tidehunter is still getting a lot of farm in the mid lane, maybe want to set up a gank on that Pycat. But Pycat is just so farm in this case, I I don't know if she's going to be going for the Pipe or the Mecha. I think if you're going to divvy up like this, I think she might be better off just getting the Pipe. Um, it's just, to me, a better regen item. And if you don't really care who's going to pick it up, I'd rather have the Enigma pick up the mech. And here comes the gank on the bot lane, Dragonite in a little bit of trouble. Oh, I'm really surprised they didn't go on that. That yep. was weird. Uh, Chen came around behind, got creeps behind, and Faces Void didn't hop in. Uh, had a full level of time walk, four levels there, and Chronosphere, but just didn't happen. And there's a smoke coming into the bot lane by CLG. This is Windrunner, Venomancer, and the Enigma. Enigma does not have Black Hole, 60 second cooldown on that, but Malif is still a very, very powerful ganking tool, so I assume... So Dragonite's just going to push the lane a little bit, and they're going to wait till they have vision on the tower, and they're just going to hop in and possibly try to get a kill in this void. CLG smoked right under an Observer Ward uh, on the oh, Roshan ramp, so maybe MYM does sense it right now. Tidehunter comes in, he does have the Ravage, 
got to be very careful if you're sitting on, on one level of Kraken Shell. It, it can proc if you take 600 damage, but because you there's so many stuns coming your way, you might just die before you even get the Ravage off. So uh, he's got to be worried about his posi positioning as well. Crystal Maiden level 7 got her Nova Max, and uh, looks like two points into the Arcane Aura. No idea what it's going to get. Keep getting Arcane Aura. It's going to be going back to the Frostbite, or maybe even take up a level or two in terms of our ultimate. So both teams kind of uh, dilly-dallying around. And I think the initiation might be coming in against Loda. Loda takes stun, takes a Nova as well. Here comes a Ravage against Tier 3. Can he get it off? That's a the question. There's a the Ravage only getting tail end of the Venom Man. So Crystal Maiden is already a Chronosphere up on Aki. Aki's gonna be dead as well. Black Hole, wow, on the edge as well. Unfortunately, did not get the C. Venom Man is gonna go down. Miracle half HP. Miracle is gonna get right click down as well. No surge to help him out. And here comes Iron Shell trying to back him up. Unfortunately, I don't think he's gonna do enough. No, he's gonna get one kill nonetheless. Going for the second kill. Shaco shot hits on the freedom. Nicely done. Now he's gonna go for a third on C. C time walk on cooldown right now, but he's gonna have it back up before the next engagement. Who came out ahead in that fight? Hard to call that one. I I would. Oh man, they did lose three heroes. I was gonna say CLG, but I didn't realize they actually lost more there. I think the raiding team could have done that a little bit better. I think Tide's ravage was okay, but uh, you know, it was a little force there, only catching two heroes. And Dragonite was probably gonna die anyways. Right. So I feel like, you know, it was more or less tied ulti to single guy, and then they got overly aggressive. They missed the, the Chronosphere on the Enigma as well, and that was kind of a problem, because then once again, they kept using their ultis on, like, one guy at a time, and I think that could have gone much better for them. Yeah, shout out to, uh, shout out to uh, MYM Voids. I've seen MYM Voids throw a questionable Chronosphere. One time in the Premier League match, saw them Chronosphere nothing in in. in <laughs> And I think he wants to uh, try to Chrono Mania Sanking, and don't you ever want to Chrono Mania Sanking because he just blinked away from it. And pretty good stuff, pretty good stuff. So yeah, hopefully uh, Chrono Star will get better because uh, you know CLG is going to have really, really good positioning. And uh, as we saw in that last engagement, if you miss any guy, they're going to try to cancel out. We have a lot of good stuns or good spells kind of help the teammates and whatever else. Bot tower is going to get destroyed without any kind of defense coming from MYM. That's going to be the third tower going down like this. And CLG doing a very good job keeping up all their exterior towers. And it does look like we did have a mech miscommunication here. Enigma picking up a buckler as well as the headdress. Windrunner has it finished and wow. um, Darkseer is the one that's going for the pipe actually. So I don't know if they did this on purpose just to stack the regen or us. They do stacks that's going to give uh, 8 regen per second to their heroes. And buckler can be used to boost armor but I would I would call this a mistake. He could have gotten like a drum of endurance or something like that to really tank up and give a little bit of team fight contribution. Yep. Back in the mid lane. Gonna kill that Ursa warrior, okay. <laughs> Poor Ursa, man. So we're kind of in this uh, farming stage of the game, and it uh, looks like Tanter is gonna be working towards his Blink Dagger, about 700 go away. Urn is on him as well. Gonna quickly do a massive item check on everyone. Uh, seems like Void is gonna be finishing his Battle Fairy very, very soon. Crystal Maiden has nothing. Chen gonna be going for the Mecha as uh, usual. Tide Hunter, no, actually picks up a Vid Booster. Uh, so basically he's just going to plan to walk in. It's not bad if he just walk in and drop the Ravage. If the enemy team decides to focus him, then they're being clumped up for a uh, big Chronosphere. The question is whether... I think CL is going to just keep backing off. There's no reason to kind of go heads in against a Tide Hunter. So I'm not too sure whether that, that item build is going to work out here for Tide. Me on Marana just have a Wraith Man and Treads. Still working on her Mantis Tower, I presume. How much gold does she have? 1800, working towards that Yasha. On the dark side, we do have a Hood on the Dark Seer. Mecha on quote unquote both heroes. <laughs> Mecha's already <laughs> finished on PyCat and of course Miracle getting some some rare stuff. Uh, we do have a uh, armlet done on Dragonite and an Ogre Club, so he's gonna be going for BKB. How do you feel about armlet DK? I think it's a nice a nice it's not an amazing carry, but it's a, a good stage. It's kind of the item that you need to make Dragonite into a, a carry, I really feel like. Um, if if he gets a BKB after this, he's gonna be a magic immune to a lot of things. Chronosphere will still hit him. It's, it's hard to say though. Um, I think they have to do it though. In this case, their early pushing did not happen with the Venomancer, Enigma, and the Dragonite like they thought it was going to. And from there they said, well, we're not going to outpush them, we're going to have to try to outcarry them. So I think that's my guess at least, why he did pick up an armlet this game. And it does put him into decent position. But here comes the gank coming from the back. There was a ward up and they did scout it, so Courier coming through. Is it going to get denied? There's a wall up in the vacuum. Venomancer's ulti is going to hit a lot of people. The Tide Ravage is going to land on a lot of heroes. Hand of God goes down. Venomancer almost dead as well, but going after Dragonite. Miracle looking for a black hole, but he can't really find a target. And the Chronosphere goes down just when he was about to black hole. That's going to get Loda killed, I think. And the black hole just now getting casted on two heroes. Is Void going to drop? He does have another time walk, so he can get out. He gets sent back by the Chen. 
Enigma gets picked off as well, and Priest of the Moon may fall as well. Everybody is so low HP, I can't believe it. the power shot coming through. Venomancer gonna trade. No, not gonna trade with Mirana. And now chasing after the Windrunner. Very even team fight, but it looks like Dire Team loses four and the Radiant only two. Highcast seems to be p posing problem in these team fights. In that beginning of the team fight, MYM three heroes focus on Wind River, pop the Wind Run, and that was the end of that. And it looks like a first hit bash on Pycat. Pycat might be bashed to death. Tears the time walk just to slow him down, and I think he's gonna make it out there. Yeah, MYM could have fought that team fight a lot better after the Ravage was dropped off. Three or four people were focusing the winner, and, and she just got out very easily. Um, if no MYM had better focus fire, I think that would be even a better, a greater victory. But it was n nonetheless like four for two, or four for one, something like that. MYM huge victory in that engagement, and the gold difference chart should reflect that as it's climbing back up a little bit from 4K. And now with the battle fairy finished and 500 in the bank, I think uh, Faces Void and, and MYM is sitting pretty happy, even though they don't have as many towers yet. I think those towers are just waiting to be taken down. Yeah, I would agree there. And the hardest thing about Faces Void compared to a hero like Anti Mage is getting to that Battle Fury. He's not as survivable as an Anti Mage. It's much harder to get a time walk off. The cooldown is much longer. Um, so it's usually a little harder for him to get that farm up. So uh, once he does get the Battle Fury, though, he can do the same kind of thing. He can farm jungles like crazy fast. And he's going to teleport to the bot lane. He's going to clear a couple creep waves or just hop into the jungle. There's actually a lot of dire wards up, so they will be seen where his positioning is, uh, and that'll be kind of interesting. Looks like Windrunner City on a Sentry Ward and a gank on the mid lane. Looks like they find Loda across the uh, the river on their side, and he's going to take a bunch of nukes here. Test of Faith goes on Gush as well. He does turn on his arm lane. He's tried switching here, looking for a stun, but I think he's going to get picked off for sure, and he does drop. Arrow would have cinched the deal as well, but he was already dead by then. Loda caught out in enemy position so deep without any support. Maybe he was... Is this some pro mind games? Like, oh, this has to be a bait, you know? I'm the only one on the minimap. Mm -hmm. And uh, MYM just went on him. It's like, oh, okay, never mind. So uh, that 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 death did not help him out. Just gonna go back to armor a little bit. It is one of the most cost-effective damage item. It is 65 damage for like, I think less than 3k go, or maybe a little bit more than 3k go. It's a lot more cost-effective than a battle fairy. It gives you attack speed as well, and the uh, 25 HP Dijon doesn't hurt DK damage, especially if you're gonna stack life steal onto it, which I assume he will. Generally, you go uh, armlet life steal, very very common choice. So uh, we'll see. Uh, it's going to give a massive damage, like you suggested, but the tanking yeah, potential, the lack of tanking is what I'm worried about. Yeah, it, 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 I would argue Dragonite builds are really up in the air right. at, at the moment. I mean, sometimes people just grab like a Vanguard and a Pipe, and some games they grab like a Vanguard and Mjolnir, and occasionally you see these. These are a little bit more rare, the Armlet, as well as the Black King Bar. So it's going to give him a lot of survivability and a lot of damage, and once he gets that lifesteal up, if he's not getting chain stunned, you know, it's actually going to be very, very nice. And once you follow that up with an AC, you actually hit really, really hard and actually become more of a uh, a hard carry while still being extremely tanky because yep. his armor levels are so high. And I think the the only thing that he's going to be really missing here is a little bit of an HP pool. That's oftentimes uh, the armlet problem, but once he gets a couple items into that, he's going to be sitting pretty well. And hopefully for their sake, uh, they can get the disables off. Priest Moon's going to pop an ulti. There's a little bit of action going on in the jungle. And Hand of God gets popped. But Chen will get found anyways. Big AoEs coming from the darks here and the Windrunner, so very aggressive, anti juggling and they're going to clean up all of his creeps, which is always a sad day when you're playing Chen. That's tough, it's the time that you have to invest to really make sure you get enough creeps to back up. Looks like Mirana's going to TP on the bot lane, and they look, I think they're going to go for a gank um, on COG. COG maybe feeling confident after they just want to fight, and here we go, again we have a Chronosphere, that's a question, Chronosphere just getting Pycat just on the tail end. And uh, they are gonna get Pycat, I think. Yeah, the Ravage is gonna make sure to get the kill. And now Aki in a little bit of trouble. Black hole coming up. Can we get a black hole? He's looking for one. Fortunately, unable to do so. Here comes the Ravage. Wall replica. HYH right back. Uh, looks right, and they're gonna pick up the uh, Dark Seer. And now Loda still doing some damage. Unfortunately, he's gotta just back off for now. As his teammate's pretty much dead. MYM, another victory here. As we see, the Illusions actually pulling that Mirana very, very hard. Gotta back off for now, and I think they could transition to a bot tower push if they want to. Yeah, I definitely think that's possible. Loda's uh, dragon form is going to run out very, very shortly here, and at that point, he's not going to be able to contribute anything as a melee hero in the armlet. It's just not enough. But their wards are enough to keep the creep wave pass, and they need creeps to push here. And the problem is, I mean, they have a Chen, but no creeps there, and it looks like Chen going for mechanism. He's got a uh, Vlad's almost. Which will be very nice to uh, benefit the void for a little bit more mana and some lifesteal there. And Lotus still trying to hold this off. He's actually stunned on the Mariana and he's gonna take some frost. He's being way too aggressive, I feel like. His allies are mostly dead here, and most of their team was still bottom. Not that he knew that, of course, but not very many of them died. Yep. Maybe he feels like he can play aggressive because if you pop the uh, 
pop the armor you're sitting around 2k HP with huge amount of armor and you feel like that's gonna be tanky enough and in that case it was but still gotta be very careful and now CLG gonna go for the Roshan here do they actually have the DPS output? DK can do the damage but we'll see He's going to actually turn on his armlet here, and there's a focus fire out of PyCat, level 2 focus fire. So he's doing pretty decent damage, 80 damage a hit, and with Enigma coming through here, putting the Malefus down, there might be enough stun. And they do have a mech, I knew that for sure, uh, except that it has already been used by Windrunner, her mana pool very low as well. And are the raiding team going to react in time? They just now do a ping, they think uh, they know what's going on, and I hear an arrow, and it's going to fly on through, it's going to almost kill Roshan, that's pretty close. And Windrunner picks up the Aegis, surprisingly, not going to be Dragon, I think they know that they need those shackle shots in the team fight, and if she gets picked off and killed at the start, they're going to lose the team fight no matter what. Yep, and she also is the mecha holder, so uh, losing that 250 AoE heal and the armor bonus going to be crucial against uh, MYM. And so if she ever gets chronosphered, not the biggest deal. Um, but yeah, Dragon Knight also not pick up the Aegis is a very common choice considering that you don't respawn back with Dragon Form. That's considered one of his weaknesses uh, because in especially in late game situation, he's not the best Aegis carrier nor is he the best hero that you want to buy back with because buying back with Dragon Knight without a Dragon Form is some, somewhat lackluster. So, mm -hmm. And it looks like a yeah, load of Ogre Club back into a Morbid Mask. So pretty strange. I'm not too sure yeah. what was his uh, train of thought there was. Yeah, he might have just changed his mind or something. He probably was like, I need a Black King bar, and then all of a sudden he said, well, I've got Armlet, but it's going to be a while until I finish my Black King bar. I want a little bit more survivability because he's worried about going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I think he has decent enough items now where he can actually fight the uh, Faces Void, who's also going to Black King bar. Um, so I think he's going to be okay at this point. Once he does grab that Helm of the Dominator, he can fight in the team fights a lot more often. He can be a little bit more aggressive because obviously getting that life steal back is always really good. And Helm of the Dominator gives you another 5 armor. Makes you even more tanky against physical damage. It's yep. really not a bad item. Just keep stacking the armor, man. If if their lineup is mostly physical, which it kind of is, um, I think that's going to be absolutely fine. So he's going to be able to do a little bit, be a little bit more aggressive in the upcoming team fights. Of course, the uh, Helm of Dominator allows you to dominate creep, and of course, pull ancients. And Dragonite is one of the best heroes to pull ancients because you can turn it on your dragon form and splash and farm for like a thousand go in like a minute or so. That's pretty decent stuff. Mm -hmm. Back on the top lane, we see Marana going for a uh, MKB. It's generally, you don't see MKB rush right in the beginning because you don't have that much attack speed to work with and you can't really proc uh, mini bashes all day long. Generally, we see it bought after the Manta style, so very non-standard build to buy it right now. And I'm not too sure what that train of thought is. Maybe it's like, oh, they have Wild Repla. Getting Manta will give them a stronger Marana, but that's, that's stretching it. I think <laughs> Manta style is such a core, I have no idea why he's skipping it. Yeah, it might just be a preference or something like that, who knows. Yeah. Uh, but it looks like uh, MYM going for a sort of a timing gank here. Faces Void just picking up his Black King Bar. Tide as well, super farmed, has this pipe of insight with his Vitality Booster, man. He is so survivable and going to be such a threat in the upcoming team fights. Priest of the Moon, once again, does not have her Monkey King Bar finish, but she does have the Javelin purchase, and the Dire team doing the same. This is always extremely comical when this happens. And they go the other ways, of course. <laughs> Uh, but they will have Dragonite farming, so uh, the war will see a Dragonite passing through. Don't know if that's alone, but they, yeah, their smoke has ran out here. A Tie Hunter going for the massive tanky build, and now with the pipe and the vid boost here, it's it's so hard to bring him down. Even it's it's just not worth dumping spells upon him, but you kind of have to because he is tied and he's gonna be running right in. C by the way has a blocking bar finish, so he's only gonna be worrying about that Enigma. And the question is whether the Enigma could kind of stay out of the chronosphere and get a rescue black hole once uh, once the uh, fece hit the fan. You know what I'm yeah, saying? it's going to be interesting. Yes, I do. I do know what you're saying. <laughs> Thank you. Enigma, I think it's important to point out Enigma doesn't have any good items. <laughs> like, he farmed very well in the jungle, but once again, bought a buckler and bought a headdress, and then he buys an ogre club because he's like, well, guess I'm going for a black king bar. And that's so much gold that he could have spent on other stuff. It's like uh, 1,400 gold there on the buckler and the headdress, that could have been other things. I, I really think that's going to be a big mistake here for CLG. Yep. I mean, he could have a blink dagger, he could have tankiness to go for the black holes, but he's forever going to not have contribution out of those two items, or at least not as much as he should. Both teams still farming it up, Void on the bot lane, TP Scroll ready to go. And one of the big tips for both support and carry player in this stage of the game where you don't know when a team fight is going to be happening, try to walk to the lane and such TP there. Uh, because too many times a team fight breaks out in a pub game and you look to your carry, it's like, oh, I need a TP. It's like, I'll oh, TP on CD. So uh, something that we could all improve on is, you know, walk into lane. Especially if you're a hero like a, like a shaker or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. You always need a TP to be up. 
Uh, so that's that's what C did just now, and uh, he's he's farming right now. I think they're gonna try to push down the bot lane. Uh, bot tower is very low, but it seems like CLG is gonna be defending that. Ah, oh, faceless void just sold his TP scroll at the side shop. Gonna pick up a morbid mask. And he's going to be going for Mask Madness most likely. I absolutely advocate this when you have a blocking bar. I think it's excellent. Um, the, the attack speed is obscenely powerful with that Battle Fury. And once he does get the Magic Community, the main source of bonus damage is just simply not going to come in for you. But the TP comes from the Enigma. He's looking for a Malphus or something, but a nice net for the Nartor Warlord is going to keep him alive. The uh, Centaur does get Gale, but they're not even going to commit and kill that either. I think they're just going to sit back and be a little bit scared about Initiation. Yeah, Pot and Pot press their ulti, so that's why they're backed up. How late do you think that it's not worth it to get the Mask of Madness anymore? Um, I mean, he is level 17. Uh, we're 30 minutes in. Do you think it's, it might be even better to get a, a Helm of Dominator? I'm not. I'm not really like. Question. I, I do agree. Mask of Madness is just a really good item. I'm just kind of. This is a general theory craft. How late I, do you I, want to stop getting the Mask of Madness? I would theory craft that there's no point in the game where a Mask of Madness is probably bad, unless. Unless you're talking like obscenely late circumstances where all your the carrier you're fighting against has like four or five items, I guess at that point I would say it might not be worth it. But I mean, I I think the only constraint I would put on Mask Madness is don't get it too early when you have no damage to back it up. That's right. probably the only case when I would be a little bit hesitant. And obviously you have to worry about things like I said about the Blacking Bark. You have to be worried about just getting chain nuked down by taking extra damage from uh, Mask Madness. That's that's the only things I'd really worry about myself. Alright, and uh, let's see what his item is going to be. He does have the Thousand Go for his Mask of Madness right now, still not purchasing it just yet. Preoccupied with the Kree Wave. And also in this case of the game, is it better to get a Helm and go for something like Yasha? Uh, instead of... Again, this is more broad theory uh, mm. theorizing. Theory. Yeah, they'd be pretty expensive, is yeah, the only downside. Yeah. Uh, the, the Helm would give you some good damage. But I really think that what's going to be important is the bashes. I mean, if you get that attack speed, you, you're going to pretty much want Faces Void items that balance out damage and attack speed because uh, getting the extra bashes in that's disabled, that can really turn team fights. People can make mistakes. That's going to go through up any Black King bar that the Dragon Knight picks up, and he's actually very close to that 300 gold away. So, I mean, if you keep your attack speed up and you get the bashes off on Dragon Knight, he could get chained still enough, and that can really swing battles um, in late game situations as a hard carry. MKB finish on the Marana, Ogre Club on her as well, going for Black King Bar. Black King Bar is quote unquote a counter towards the Wall of Replica because you don't get vacuumed in. So pretty mm -hmm. decent stuff. And yeah, Marana and Void's gonna be splitting the farm. It seems like they're very comfortable with what this game is going to. No need to go pressure towers, no need to go push towers, as long as they don't give away ages. I think they're gonna be fine here. Go difference, let's check it out. We are sitting around 2k, but 33 minutes in, that's just, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. I think I figured out why Mirana went uh, MKB first. If you look at the Radiant team, how many people do they have that can counter Black Holes? Not much easily. That's you true. You have a Frostbite, you have a Tide Ravage, and you have an Arrow, and you have a Chronosphere. We can talk maybe about Chen Creeps, but that's kind of tough at times. If you have a Troll Warlord that's outside, that'll work. But I think that's why Mirana picked up this really fast MKB. It's because their team wanted someone else to be able to stand outside of range and easily be able to disable them. I mean, there might be creeps in the way, so arrow wouldn't work out necessarily really well, so I think that's why she picked that up before Mantis still. Yeah, MKB is also good against the uh, the Windrunner, Swimrunner, that's true. so, because um, it, it will shoot through uh, the the mischance, evasion. yeah, the evasion, and also uh, because DK is very armor heavy, uh, the MKB does do a little bit of magical damage. So, a lot of small stuff that will benefit from getting MKB first. It seems like she's not really wor got to worry about survivability, because uh, she hasn't actually died too much, and now going for the BKP afterwards, it's going to make her a very, very um, reliable DPS output. And after that, I think a, a life seal is going to just seal the deal in terms of, there's really no way you kill this Marana. But we'll see right now, as we see Dyer pushing on the bot lane, going for that tier 2, and CLG realize they can't defend this, and they're going to use the time to swarm their Loda. And Loda right now does have that Helm BKB and Armlet. But even more so, I, I, I don't think he could really even, even compare the DPS to any of the two carries coming from the Radiant side. I think he's doing at least as much as the Priest of the Moon is doing, but uh, Faceless Void is obviously going to be a big threat in the upcoming team fights. He still hasn't bought his Mask of Madness. Yeah. Maybe he's just going to buy a Butterfly or something. Uh, no, he's going to buy a Demon Edge. Very interesting. He MKB might also well. be making an MKB. Yeah. Uh, uh, interesting that he just got the Morbid Mask, though. Usually people will just spend the extra thousand to upgrade it here, but he's going to be hitting a lot harder in the upcoming team fights. And once again, that stuff is getting splashed by the Battle Fury. So he's going to want a Chronosphere and just wail on the squishiest hero in the clump and uh, do really good splash damage. 
CLG not really looking for any fights in this point. I'm really surprised that PyCat did not go for Yule Scepter. I mean, Force Half is such a standard item, it's so good. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, I feel like Yule Scepter, again, especially against Chrono Sphere, might not be a poor choice. You cannot Force Half uh, any unit within the Chrono. On the bright side, he will be going for a Sheep Stick instead, so it's kind That's, of a trade-off, yeah, yeah, you could say. Right. I could get a Yules, which is really good against uh, Faces Void before he gets BKB, but he does have a BKB now, so you'd almost argue that it's probably better just to get the Sheep Stick instead. True. There could be a timing window where it'd be really, really useful, but I think that's past once he got his Blacking Bar. Yep. Let's keep checking the items on this pause. Except there is finish on our Darkseer. Um, Arcane Boots up on Venomancer. Yeah, no real items on anyone. Uh, Black Hole's Enig Enigma's Black Hole is going to be... Uh, uh, helped out by a black king bar that he's uh, working towards too. Uh, Vlad's is up on Freedom. That's his Chen. I really like that. Uh, Vlad's. Mm -hmm. It's it's so underestimated, especially. Well, I, I think a lot of us have when we think Vlad's, we think Pub. Yeah. <laughs> and more more often the case that is true. But in these uh, pro pro level games, Vlad's is I mean plus five armor, mana regeneration, life steal. It's, it's just a lot of benefits. Uh, and if you Chen could pick it up after Mecha, it's it's very very good. Yeah, it really is. Um, especially, I would love to see one on the Dire team as well. If you give your whole team five extra armor, it really helps a lot against physical damage carries. Especially when you're in something like a Chronosphere and you don't have any other ways to survive. Right. It's like just tanking up, having some armor and things like that. Make They really go a long way. Um, Aki actually very underfarmed on the Venomancer. I heard an arrow, but I do not see it. It's going to land on the Venomancer. Five second disable, and there's a Windrun popped by Windrunner. Oh, looking like she wants to be aggressive. It's always a nice way to defend your allies, is be aggressive yourself. Yep. Tyhunter does have the Blink Dagger, so uh, Roshan engagement should be in favor of MYM. They do have the big AoEs and the Marana chasing away the Windrunner. Both teams kind of dilly-dallying around. There's, there's going to be very little smoke initiation. They're going to try it anyways. Not going to go down the river. Great choice because you know that place is going to be heavily warded as you guys see here. So they're going to try to wrap around and trying to set up a, a huge backstab. The team fight that they want on the top lane defending their tier 2 tower was done in a huge backstab as well and their DK is going to meet up with the Void and he's going to be in huge trouble. Moonlight Shadow being used. BKB gets popped. Are we going to have Chrono? Where is he? Chrono? There's a Chrono right on the DK. A perfect Chrono. Not even trapping the Centaur. Wall Breath Cut Illusion popping right in. Where is he? Ravage? I do not know. There's a Ravage. Black Coast on top. There's a Ravage and everyone's going to be dead as you see MYM names popping up on the left side. I don't know how CLG is going to come back from this. And Dirk's here trying to juke it out here. He doesn't even have a TP scroll though, and they will get vision and get him. Um, wow, the Dragonette was huge in that team fight, man. Gonna find Priest Moon who does get shackled. No, that's a Windrunner they're chasing after. Going after him now, he does have his Force Staff up still. He apparently has used his Aegis in that team fight, but not really a great situation for uh, the Radiant team there. I think uh, DK was appropriately popped his BKB really fast there. And that kept him alive for a while, but um, I think their team was extremely well, extremely spread out over the Roshan area, and they weren't able to uh, clump up quite as fast and react fast Re enough. NYM giving a lecture on how to smoke gank, not just smoke in and run in from the far, but some huge backstabs coming in, and that's the second backstab they did, and it's very very successful. Arrow hits on Pycat, and it looks like they're gonna make it go on him, and she is somehow trapped in the trees. Did she force staff in and the tree respawn or something like that? It looks like HYHY might actually go down. Gonna get them back home. No, there's a path out. It's nicely done here by setting up the arrow, and of course, Windrunner wasn't able to pop off the Windrunner because MKB was on uh, Murano. So that's another kill that they could not afford to give up. Now, with Aegis on, on the uh, Faces Void, what will CLG do? Yeah, he still hasn't gotten his Mask of Man. It's just once again sitting on his Morbid Mask. A little curious, but. He's going to get his MKB up a little bit faster this way, and once he does get that MKB and possibly a Mask of Madness after it, I think the game's going to be over, because he's going to hop into a Chronosphere, and he's going to kill somebody no matter what. Once you get that BKB up, there's nothing that can stop you, and there's no evasion uh, unless you get, like, Ghost Scepters or something for all of your heroes. Something like that is probably the only thing that will keep you alive. Priest Moon swinging to the top lane, BKB is finished on her, and she's going to clear the deep wave, do a little bit of split pushing here, I think. And MYM probably had a gold advantage. Yeah, they're up to 3k. They swung it back from the Dyer's favor and are looking really strong. Yep. So, uh, interesting uh, dual Crystal Maiden tie lane with Chen Jungling. Worked out mm -hmm. fine. I'm not too sure whether um, CLG did not take advantage of that or something. Or I, I felt like from the get go, MYM had the advantage mostly in every single aspect. Pike had mm -hmm. tried to answer back in the mid lane and he did very well. He outlaned HYHY pretty badly. But it, it was, it's just not enough. 
Yeah, I would absolutely agree. I mean, like I said, Dragon Knight, not the strongest laner. He does have a stun, which is great, but he doesn't have a getaway maneuver. He does have that armor, but if you do lane against somebody that has more disables than you, it's not a good thing. And Venomancer did a lot of pulling as well, and he got killed a couple times, was forced to switch lane, and at that point, he's always been a little bit behind. He does have a plate mail, at least, so survivability against Faces Void went up a lot, but um, still going to be a little bit of a rough situation. He's got to survive that Chronosphere. Yep. And once he survives the Chronosphere, he can actually lifesteal back and do decent damage to some of these support heroes. Most of which are actually still very tanky though. Right now, I think all eyes on COG's a Darkseer. If Darkseer could get some big initiations off, it might be... Are they going to use a Black O for this? No, they are not. Ooh. Black O was up, it, it so... It just came. No, no, it, it came off cooldown as he teleported. Wow. Out, I think. Like, I saw the icon flash as I checked his uh, cooldowns. That's pretty close. That was that was unfortunate, but they did use a BKB, which is pretty pretty decent, I guess. One longer duration of that black king bar. Yeah, it's definitely always good to throw them, uh, make them waste their cooldowns like that. Crystal Maiden is actually very squishy. Uh, probably the only squishy person on the entire raiding team. Looks like Chen's going for an Agatim Scepter. He still needs a thousand gold, but once he gets that, 30 second ulti, man. <laughs> will team fight even last so cool. 30 seconds though? That's a question. I don't think they will. But you can team fight and then team fight again. That's true. Sometime in the next 120 seconds, which is good. So it, it can be very, very good. Team fight right into a push, even when mm -hmm. you guys are very low HP. So that's yep. the benefits of that. Um, I I'm wondering how how CLG is gonna take this game in terms of are they gonna be aggressive? Because uh, in the last couple of engagements, are they when they're defending, they are losing the fights. And Darkseer, I, I feel like it's a hero that you want to go push with, you want to go lead the gangs with. He doesn't react as well in a defensive position, and we've been seeing that. I mean, he does drop off decent wall of replica, rep, wall of replica into vacuums, but at that point, like, one of you guys half dead, uh, you know, Chronosphere is down, it just makes life a little bit more difficult. It looks like they are going to go for a mid-tower push, and here's where Darkseer really shines. The wall, you know, cut off from uh, reinforcement points, and Loda popping off that armlet, going upon, and here comes a blink, Chrono! No Chrono just yet. There's a Chrono trapping three, and that's a great Chrono Sphere. And I do believe Darkseer is going to be the next one to fall. Yeah, he's just taking a couple bashes here. Dragonite being aggressive. He's going to stun on the Priest and then do good damage. The Ravage hitting so many people with that vacuum there. That was ridiculously good. And there's the Anchor Smash as well. And Loda just getting crushed now with the uh, the pipe up, and that's going to be just about it for them. Uh, XP now are running away. Pycat trying to survive. No force step on him. He's going to use Wind Run at least. Uh, and they're not going to get the Frostbite off, just barely. He's going to be doing a little bit of juke in there. There's the Time Walk. From Faces Void, you will be pursuing this. Why or are chase? they going to lead him off? Why chase? Just go for the mid tower. They are going to eventually get this kill, but it's just a very expensive kill. Yeah, that's definitely true. And he does get it. Faces Void, I'm sorry, the uh, Wall of Replica Illusion is going to pick off the uh, Wildkin. Chen was running for his life there. Still doesn't have his egg in him scepter, and CLG is going to call a good game, which I think is adequate. There's no racks down yet, but they know. After that team fight, they had a good initiation. Just wasn't enough. Yep. Well, actually, it was a void that initiated again. Three man chrono. Uh, wall was sort of down, but you know the vacuum was not able to get more than one or two heroes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gigi's gonna be called, waiting for the dire side to disconnect so we get the end game sets. And the Enigma died in that fight yep. for nothing. For Didn't nothing. get to ulti. Um, I mean, he had a black king bar, but wasn't a whole lot there. Once again, wasted a lot of money on that uh, headdress and the buckler. So. Never really was got items to contribute. Still had his abilities, but never went through. Did everybody disconnect? Uh, yeah, all the radiant. We'll get a dis Actually, everybody is disconnected from this game. Are we going to get a victory or what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. There you go. Hey, they won. Because that one guy left first. Yeah, I think so. Another throw. Alright, we'll be coming, guys, with game number two momentarily. Don't go anywhere, guys.